Hey there, Commanders. Meet the War Ox, an advanced, engineered Type 10 Defender optimized for high-level PvE activity. I've covered this build a while ago using a different video format, but thought it would be a good idea to try updating a few older builds that I've found particularly useful to take advantage of improvements to my production processes. The Type 10 Defender is one of the most fun ships to build by virtue of its unique design and turret-focused hardpoint layout. Despite being mostly reliant on turrets, the Type 10 manages to be an effective wedge to be recklessly jammed into the center of massive battles. Its unbeatable hull, coupled with ample shielding, combine to form a ship that is a relentless chore for anyone to fight and one which makes for a devastating multi-crew ship, when set up properly. Because of the significant engineering load, power play, and tech broker module requirements, this ship is an advanced build for later stage players with all engineers unlocked and a credit balance of at least 600 million. This is a long-term project build that will require patience and commitment in order to unlock everything as defined, but can be worked around with alternative modules when needed. Our armor will be size 1A reactive surface composites, with the heavy-duty blueprint and deep plating experimental. This maximizes weight, hull HP, and inverts the typical resistance curves for this hull, making it more vulnerable to thermal damage, but incredibly resistant to explosive and kinetic damage sources. This is an essential step to balancing engineering resistances later on, so don't engineer the armor until you have reactive composites installed. The power plant is size 8B, with the armored blueprint and double-braced experimental. An A-rated reactor can be used here, but will cost more. With power management, an 8B unit is adequate for our requirements, it offers greater integrity, and is significantly less expensive. Thrusters are likewise size 7B, offering lower cost and greater module integrity. We further increase integrity with the strengthening blueprint and double-braced experimental effect. This is one of the few circumstances where I recommend utilizing drive strengthening, and is a result of the Type 10's especially slow movement speed. Even with A-rated thrusters and dirty drive tuning, the maneuvering characteristics of the Type 10 do not improve much making it uniquely vulnerable to drive system damage, even when fighting NPC ships. Drive strengthening provides extra shields down protection from damage to such an extent that these drives can withstand directed targeting by player-controlled ships. It won't outright win a PvP engagement, but can withstand the wrath of a fully fitted PvP Fertilance long enough to effect an escape without too much trouble. The frameshift drive is size 7B, paired with the shielded blueprint and double-braced experimental effect. Like with the drives, the Type 10 is simply too slow to avoid incoming damage, so we must absorb it. When paired with module reinforcement packages and hull engineering, this drive will be a tough nut to crack, even in PvP encounters. Life support is size 5A, offering the best combination of performance and integrity available. Engineering utilizes the reinforced blueprint, adding mass to the module in exchange for a boost to overall integrity. While less important for engineering purposes, life support failure does mean a more immediate return to port for repairs, so avoiding this helps the ship remain engaged for longer. The power distributor will be size 7A. Engineering is flexible here because of a low-draw pulse laser and multi-cannon loadout. The shielded capacitor blueprint is possible here, providing incredible resilience during shields down engagements. It also provides for much greater power efficiency, though at the cost of maintaining stock capacitor recharge and storage levels. When deployed in this build, it will be very difficult to maintain a charged weapon capacitor, even with a full four pips directed to the task. Thankfully, Pulse lasers and multi-cannons can still operate with a fully drained weapons capacitor, so long as enough pips are directed into it. When firing with the drained capacitor, firing rates scale down based on the available power, greatly reducing effective DPS for every pip removed from said capacitor. 
Running your weapons capacitor like this causes the weapon systems to produce much more heat per shot than they would otherwise generate, making it possible for even low heat loadouts to cause an overheat condition. So weapon selection, positioning, and trigger discipline have a larger effect than would otherwise be felt. Charge-enhanced or weapon-focused engineering blueprints improve capacitor performance, but this comes at the cost of capacitor resilience, making it more vulnerable to overheat and external damage sources. In exchange for this vulnerability, you get better weapon heat efficiency, higher effective DPS, and slightly more flexibility in pip management. It's still possible to fully drain the weapon's capacitor over sustained engagement, though it does take longer. Between these two alternative options, I favor weapon focusing, since fueling thirsty turrets will be the most important single function that we need the capacitor for. If you have prismatic shields, power draw on the system's capacitor will be low enough that it can easily maintain a full charge. The Type 10's boost function is mostly irrelevant, adding about 50 meters per second to the ship's top speed. Here again, the performance gain isn't meaningful, so we ignore it. The sensor package is size 4B, providing just enough range for the weapons package and saving some power. While A-rated sensors are possible, it adds more power draw to a build that already requires power management. The B-rated package offers more integrity and still responds well to long-range engineering, which comes highly recommended. The size 6C fuel tank is left unmodified. Optional internals on the Type 10 are abundant, offering a unique and powerful balanced damage tank build, though achieving the most powerful configuration requires prismatic shielding which means waiting a month in the Ailing Duval powerplay queue if you have not already done so. The size 8 optional internal on this build is a size 8B shield cell bank, leveraging the specialized blueprint with the boss cell's experimental effect. This is a PVE-centric cell bank that can be very easily countered by the feedback cascade experimental effect on railguns, typically found on PvP-focused ships. A rapid charge blueprint can reduce vulnerability to feedback cascades, but the Type 10 isn't fast or maneuverable enough to take advantage of it, so plan on never effectively deploying a shield cell bank in any PvP engagement. A size 7A prismatic shield generator fills in the next optional slot, leveraging the reinforced blueprint and high-capacity experimental effect. This forms a strong foundational energy shield with high absolute damage characteristics. This comes at the cost of a less balanced damage resistance profile, but still allows for all damage resistances to settle above 30%. This is a great shield for resisting plasma accelerators while still being able to hold off conventional weapon damage. A size 6D fighter hanger provides support options for PvE-focused solo engagements. It remains a great way to break up incoming hostile ships and provides for extra damage potential to be leveraged by an NPC pilot or two friends via multi-crew. Note that deploying a fighter in open play where other players are present results in networking issues that affect other players in the instance. The two military internals split the difference between hull and module reinforcement with a size 5D package for each. The hull reinforcement package is engineered heavy duty with the deep plating experimental effect. No engineering is available for module reinforcement packages. All remaining optional internals are hull reinforcement packages except for a single size 3 optional internal which carries a size 3E module reinforcement package. The size 1 optional is also left open for an advanced docking computer. This can be substituted for a module of your choice, but is an excellent comfort and convenience feature on this hull. All hull reinforcements are engineered heavy duty with the deep plating experimental, except for the size 2, which is engineered thermal resistant with the reflective plating experimental. This gets all the hull resistances over 45% and lands hull absolute strength at about 6200. 
with a hole hardness of 75, the current highest in the game, the Type 10 all but requires large hardpoints to effectively attack it, or the use of specific high penetration weapons like the railgun. The hardpoint configuration is energy focused, with pulse laser turrets making up the majority of potential damage. These often underrated weapons are one of the best time on target, sustained DPS weapons in the game. Most of the difficulty with their use comes from maintaining that time on target, a difficulty which turrets work greatly to overcome. All four large hardpoints will be size 3F pulse laser turrets with the focused engineering blueprint. This greatly increases their armor piercing capability to 111 from its base stat of 52, providing for moderately effective internal module subtargeting once a target shields are disabled. Range is extended to a 6 km max, matching the dedicated long range blueprint while also pushing the damage falloff range out from 500 meters to 1 kilometer. The experimental effect on these weapons is thermal shock, but scramble spectrum can be substituted if desired. Thermal shock is there in the event of a PvP encounter, because it imparts significant heat to targeted ships, making for yet another way that this build can screw with gankers, since most PvP builds run hot. Adding a little heat can push their builds over the limit. Phasing sequence, by contrast, allows for 10% of shield damage to bleed through into a target's hull. Unfortunately, this damage is inconsequential in high-level PvE and nearly all PvP. It reduces effective DPS and on this build amounts to less than 0.30 absolute damage per shot, with the shield thermal resistance, range, and hit rate greatly influencing actual damage imparted. This effect is best applied to high fire rate or high damage weapons, and is not effective here. Size 2 hardpoints will fit two additional pulse laser turrets on the dorsal hull. These turrets are also fitted with the focused engineering blueprint, but with different experimental effects. One turret gets the emissive munitions experimental, which acts to counter stealth ships, and heatsink masking ensuring that target locks are maintained on any ship in range. The other engineering blueprint is Scramble Spectrum, which triggers random malfunctions on the target with successful hull damage. This scramble effect does not stack, and has a fixed cooldown mechanic, which makes additional instances of this effect on other weapons do nothing. It works on player and NPC ships, but does best on small or medium hardpoints. The ventral medium hardpoint will be a Seeker Missile Rack, with preference to the Packhound Launcher, provided as a power play reward by Leon Rui. Packhounds are designed specifically to defeat point defense systems, sacrificing some base damage and projectile speed to fire four smaller missiles in a volley. Engineering should be high capacity with the Drag Munitions Experimental Effect. This maximizes ammunition endurance and greatly increases the chance that the Drag munitions effect gets applied on a target. This experimental effect is one of the most powerful available on Seeker missiles. When triggered, it causes a reduction to engine efficiency in the target, making their ship handle as if it has no pips set to the engines. While boost recharge is not altered in the target, the effectiveness of a boost cycle is diminished. Some ships feel this effect more than others, the Crate and Ferdulance being two excellent examples. Drag Munitions does not cripple them, but mostly serves to annoy them, causing turns to run wide and helping to keep them in range of your turrets. The two forward-mounted small hardpoints are size 1G multi-cannon turrets with the high-capacity engineering blueprint. One turret gets the Corrosive Shell Experimental, while the other gets Thermal Shock. Corrosive Shell lowers the hull hardness of a target ship, making them more vulnerable to incoming damage from all sources, including those of allied ships, while Thermal Shock contributes to the annoying factor in the event of a PvP encounter. Utility mounts leverage four size 0A shield boosters in the top four available mounts. A single reinforced grade 5 point defense is placed on the dorsal and ventral hull, providing full coverage from all incoming missiles. 
The remaining two utility mounts includes a Sirius Corp heat sink launcher and an additional size 0A shield booster. This is a large part of why the core internals are reinforced or shielded at the module level. While the ship is not intended for PvP, it is built with open play in mind such that it can withstand a PvP attack, and could act as supporting damage in group engagements. This build is intentionally meant to be a chore to engage by constantly applying its limited DPS while dutifully draining the other guy's limited ammo. Of the five available boosters, three are engineered heavy duty grade five with the Super Capacitors Experimental. The remaining two are engineered thermal resistant with the Thermo Block Experimental. The end result is a shield with absolute integrity in the 2300 megajoule range. Resistances are all above 35% offering reasonable endurance in high damage environments. There are several different strategies when configuring shields. This one is far from the only one, so if you have a different idea in mind, feel free to implement it. The Type 10 is reasonably flexible, but keep an eye on max power draw, as many of the highest level shields require more attention be paid to power management. Flight performance is not going to be everybody's cup of tea but is regardless still a blast for the right person. The Type 10 is, by its very nature, slow to pace in engagements, encouraging a patient and methodical approach to combat encounters. Stress on the pilot is greatly reduced, though it is still possible to get overwhelmed in protracted encounters, especially against engineered NPC ships. Thankfully, even in these situations, you have plenty of time to plan your next move, as losing shield coverage is merely an early indicator of things going wrong. Between the shielded and reinforced internals, the module reinforcement packages, and 6200 absolute hull points, malfunctions and battle damage are slow to accumulate and offer plenty of advanced warning that an engagement is going sideways. I will reiterate that this variant of the Type 10 will not be winning a PvP encounter on its own, but does pack in enough armor and shielding to be safe in open play. It can resist the aggression of others and offer plenty of time for commanders to retreat. As one of the heaviest chip holes in the game, a hasty low wake departure is both easy and repeatable against all of the favorite medium sized PvP ships. Only a fellow large hull offers enough interference to force a jump to hyperspace. This build is uniquely capable of multi-crew operation, providing tasks for a full crew of four, but working better with a crew of three, where commanders not flying a fighter can act as gunners. This often overlooked role greatly increases the accuracy and effectiveness of turreted weapons and missiles. Launchers gain the ability to target and fire on any ship in range, regardless of its positioning, while also guiding turreted weapons with greater accuracy. Additional power management pips mean that the Type 10 can operate its weapons even more effectively, with a full crew enabling a full four pips to weapons and shields simultaneously. A mostly energy-based loadout means that ammunition is less of a concern, with only three high-capacity hardpoints requiring synthesis, using recipes that are considered easy to find. As for weaknesses, be aware that successful missile strikes from any ship will wreck the external modules. Attentive opponents will realize this and prioritize targeting your weapons or utilities. Point defenses can eliminate a casual missile, but if an opponent deploys packhound swarms, you will find it difficult to avoid the consequences. Also be aware that torpedoes, while very uncommon in almost all encounters, are a catastrophic threat, as this platform lacks any effective defense against them. Reverberating cascade torpedoes will cripple shields at any level of strength, and penetrator or mass lock warheads are still capable of quickly ending your day. Outside these specific and often player-driven threats, the War Ox is a devastating presence in most conflicts able to withstand direct fire from multiple hostile ships for several minutes, while returning reasonable damage that will overcome the defenses on just about anything to be found in a conflict zone. This ship does have a more difficult time in pirate activity beacons, 
where NPCs begin to use engineering similar to the PvP community. But here still. Competent target selection and patient flying offer excellent survivability and credit earning potential. It's a fun ship to fly in that combat encounters feel more naval and less like a dogfight. A fight where attrition and resource management makes a bigger difference than deft high G turns and heroic strafing runs. If that sounds like fun, then this ship is an excellent long-term build goal for players hunting an endgame level project. If you aren't at endgame level, then this build is something that can be stepped into over time, with piecemeal upgrades here and there as new engineering and module unlocks become available. With final costs in the 600 million credit range and a 30 million credit rebuy, it's an expensive project and a painful loss. But to lose it, you really have to be doing something wrong, and for quite a while. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.